I'm Roxana Markoc, curator uh, in the Department of Photography at the Museum of Modern Art and curator of the exhibition New Photography 2010. And it is my great pleasure to welcome Amanda Rosho, who is yeah. one of the four artists included in this exhibition. Welcome, Thank you. Amanda. Thank you so much. I specifically am interested and very attuned to both um, sort of artist working exclusively with the photographic medium and with photographies uses by artists working in other mediums. Mm. Um, in your case, uh, your work taps very much mm. into the photographic dimension, but at the same time is also open to um, sculptural and crafts and architectural uh, perspectives. And I would like you first to perhaps speak about the work within New Photography, uh, which was specifically conceived for this exhibition. All of the works, um, first of all, um, with the exception of one work, um, are, are new works, which is, was a tremendous opportunity um, because my work is really uh, very much uh, responsive um, and conversational. And so uh, having the opportunity to make new work really provided me with a setting in which I could really speak to these ideas. Uh, I really sought to try to kind of take apart the creative process um, uh, in a, a several different ways so that I wasn't just presenting uh, uh, images but really um, sort of trying to unpack um, what happens or what what kind of goes into producing a picture mm -hmm. um, all of the sort of aspects or the the life cycle of picture making or of production in general um, and so I'm really negotiating in all of the pieces um, a sculptural identity. Um, I'm trying to grant sort of a sculptural um, uh, or dimensional kind of uh, parameter to all of the pictures. Um, uh, the one, the one piece that uh, might be interesting to sort of um, talk about in terms of this conversation is uh, the work Inside Job uh, Number Two, which is the second in a series. Um, the interesting thing for me is that with this piece. Um, uh, the actual composition is a construction. Um, and so while you may look at it and, and see um, a studio vignette, what you're also looking at is, for me, a carefully composed picture, a carefully composed painting almost. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the pieces were sort of simulated based on me watching myself work in my studio space. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do with that work is really to kind of collapse um, the, the boundaries between what is uh, kind of authentic uh, and what is uh, a construction. Uh, and so I'm playing with all of these ideas in, in many of the works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, some of the other pieces are made without a camera, and that's another thing I'm really interested in, sort of other ways of producing pictures. And I think that that brings us to the sort of uh, major piece uh, in this installation, which is uh, the perforated, hand-drilled, mm. actually, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, pegboard, um, on which you have sort of lined up a variety of uh, images. That piece in particular um, really encapsulates a lot of the ideas that um, are kind of really sort of um, important and foundational to my work, uh, especially currently. And um, so the work itself as a sculpture, but also a, sort of a, um, an image of a moment. And so what I was thinking about when I was producing that piece is thinking about um, kind of an oversized, kind of slightly inflated version of a moment that you would see in the studio space. The pegboard specifically is meant to um, talk about a modular um, space in motion. It's a space that um, you expect or is set up for the idea of things moving through it and no, uh, nothing is fixed. It's sort of a set of coordinates that you can uh, organize things in space. And so that was a perfect way or perfect analog um, to kind of try to um, speak about um, uh, a taxonomy of images. And there's two images that have incredibly personal indexes, the first being uh, the reproduction of my mother's photograph. Um, she shot that piece um, in the early 70s as part of a larger artwork. Um, for me, looking at that image, it sort of has this simultaneity or this duality of being um, something incredibly personal. It's a photograph of my mom's face, but it's also, um, it traffics on uh, a sort of some very uh, kind of uh, like I said, classic um, kind of approaches in photography. Similarly, the, the uh, still life photograph of my father's was a product shot that um, was taken uh, in, in the context of him uh, working in a commercial studio. And I selected that image because I felt it kind of talks about uh, the, the, um, uh, 
the simultaneity of something being very kind of intimate, but also completely evacuated of anything mm -hmm. specific. I, I almost wanted it to feel almost like a, a textbook. And in fact, there is literally a piece um, uh, that is from a textbook that demonstrates uh, light wavelengths. And um, I'm really thinking about this idea of sort of collapsing all of these different sources into um, sort of one picture plane. And in a way, um, the idea of something that is commercially produced and, this, and something that is uh, uh, personally produced, such as the, the artwork of my mom, um, for me, I, I'm interested in sort of flattening the hierarchy between those things and thinking about them as formal structures. Given the richness of the sources that you are tapping mm -hmm. uh, on and uh, the different uh, photographic also um, traditions here mm -hmm. that we are talking about, can you pinpoint a few um, artists or aspects that have been of uh, influence to you in, in your work? Yeah, my family has been a huge influence in terms of watching them navigate through um, uh, creative forms, not only being artists, being fine artists. My dad actually still produces work and is, um, you know, currently, um, you know, currently makes, makes uh, has a studio practice, which is really a special kind of place to be, I think. Um, he still sends me, he sends me pictures every day of his <laughs> work on his phone. You know, it's like, you know, I have like a very uh, embedded kind of relationship with my, with my parents, but also other people in my family. Um, so my family has been a huge influence. The really great thing about this exhibition is that it sort of um, zeroes in on a really crucial aspect of my practice that I think is often overlooked because a, a lot of times there are sort of overarching forms that tend to be sculptural or mm -hmm. um, uh, installational and things like that. And so for me, this is just a really excellent um, opportunity to sort of like um, be more articulate about these particular kind of strains of, of, of thought in my practice. And so um, that's it. I just want to say thanks. So thank you, Amanda. Thank it's you. a privilege to us Thank to you have so you in the exhibition. Thank you.